right, so I kept this on the board so we could go back to it and talk about one of the things we talked about this morning. So my morning message challenge was to look at the triangle and see if you could find out how many equal parts there was. Someone looked at it and said, well, Miss Kessler, it doesn't look exactly equal. And I said, we're going to try to use our imagination because I'm not the perfect drawer, right? I can't draw a perfect circle or a perfect triangle or a perfect heart. So when you're looking at the shapes that I draw, I want you to pretend like it is perfect and the line is directly down the middle, okay? So if the line was directly down the middle here, everybody said that there were two equal parts. Fractions, what we're doing in our new unit, has everything to do with equal parts. If an object isn't broken into equal parts, we can't do a fraction with it, okay? So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at shapes and we're going to see if they have equal parts. The first thing you do before you do anything else with fractions is to find out if it has equal parts. Jason, what's the first thing you have to do with fractions? You just gave me the whole answer, but I asked, what do you look at first, Gianni? You look at how many parts it has. How many equal, equal parts. parts it has. Great job. So today's mini lesson is going to be looking at the shape to see how many equal parts it has. What do you think? Do you think that's pretty easy? That to me is just like counting, right? And counting is something that you guys all did in kindergarten. Some of you even before kindergarten. Some of you learned it at home. Some of you did it when you went to preschool. So these are all things that we can do and we can do really well. Okay? So we have equal parts. If I was looking at this shape, how many equal triangles would I find inside that shape? Four. Four. So here was my question. How many parts? There were four parts. Okay. Now, I'm going to use the green to make it different so you can see how many are shaded. And I want you to see how many parts are shaded. How many parts did I color in? It's not. Three parts. Great job. Now, during morning message, we said that there's a number that goes on top, and then there's a line, and then a number that goes down below. Does anyone remember what number goes on top? Elijah? How many numbers are shaded? Dust your shoulder off. Great memory. The number of how many parts are shaded goes on top. And we said that there were three parts that are shaded, so the three is going to go on top. This will really surprise me if you remember this. I will probably fall over with excitement if you can remember this. We have three, and then this line says something. The words aren't written on it, but it says something when we read it out loud. What does that say? A mill. <laughs> oh my goodness, out of. So we say three out of, and then the number that goes on the bottom is what, Elijah? Four. Four, and what makes it four? Why do I know it's four? Because there's four parts in the triangle. Excellent. Oh my goodness. Excellent job. So I have three out of four. That is the fraction that I shaded in here. 
I can see right now, Jamarius wants to make me fall over with excitement again. <laughs> Jamarius is still laughing. Okay, Jamarius, you can make me fall over with excitement if you can tell me how many parts are in this circle. <laughs>
tell me the fraction. Um, two out of three. If you agree with Claude, say, Claude, dust your shoulder off. Claude, dust your shoulder off. Awesome job. Why did Claude say two on top, Dominic? Because there's two that shade it in. And why did he say three on the bottom, Rima? Because there's three parts. There are three equal parts all together. Excellent job. Now, in the bottom of a fraction, we have these numbers. I have two, you could either have two, three, or four for the problems that you're going to be doing in your workbook. For this, I used eight in the bottom because I know that you're so smart you could do that. But right now I just want to talk about what we say when one of these numbers is in the bottom. So if I have, if I have two in the bottom, I want you to think about it like this. You have a piece of paper and I say to fold it. If I say to fold it, sometimes I'll say fold it in half. When you have two in the bottom, we say half. Okay? Think about when there are three in the bottom, when there, the number three is in the bottom, I want you to think of this. Next year, you will be going to what grade? Third. Third grade. So when three is in the bottom, it is broken into thirds. Four. Miss Rogers teaches what grade? So when you see a four in the bottom, you say four. Alright, here's a tricky one. Remember I said I gave you the 8 in the bottom because I think you're so smart. Do you notice a pattern? Pattern. Minus the half, because half is the only one that's kind of tricky. If you have thirds, fourths, what do you think a five would be? Fifths. Great job. So we have third, fourth, fifth. What do you think the six would say. Six. Great job. What do you think the seventh would say? Seven. And here is the hard one. Remember I said this is something that you're probably going to learn in fourth grade. If their eight is in the bottom, what is the eight going to say? Eight. Great job. Are you guys ready to practice? Yes. Remember after you're done practicing, and remember it's important to take your time when you're practicing, bring it to me to check it. So if you have a mistake, I'll circle it and you can go back to your seat and fix it. You are going to work on, let's see if my memory is good today. You're going to work on page 45 and 46. So you're going to be doing two pages. Get back to your seat.